Hey creatives, Karen here, mixed media artist and creative at By The Wolf Moon. Today I am going to share with you the creative activity that goes along with part one of the Coming Home To Self series uh, that I shared a few days ago. So this will be also a bit of an introductory video uh, to give you some ideas on how to create your own art journal for these creative activities that we are going to use to um, come back home to ourselves um, and at the end of the this series of videos which I don't know when that will be I'm just going to talk until I have nothing more to talk about <laughs> but you will hopefully have a beautiful art journal that reflects um, your authentic self so um, it's not going to be a instructional video as such or a tutorial um, it's although I will be um, creating my own um, artwork while I'm talking to you it's more to give you ideas and inspiration because I really want you to um, use your own creative skills and your own creative thinking um, but I will give you tips and ideas and things like that so this journal here, um, I've, I've done a, a quick flip through of the beginning of it. It's not complete yet, um, but it is the first um, art journal that I am creating or have started to create for myself um, in this series of creative videos. So I'm going to be actually doing a new one. Um, so starting from the beginning with you. Um, which will be easier, I think, um, for you to get ideas and inspiration from. But anyway, in this art journal, this is the page, or um, this is my version of the page, the craft activity that we're going to be working on today, which is all about you and your name. So basically, we're going to be creating a piece of art that is entirely focused on your um, birth name, your, your first name, the name that you were given when you were born. Um, and it's really a celebration piece. So why I did this for me was that I've never really liked my name. Um, and in fact, throughout my life, whenever someone would say my full name, Karen, I, it actually got to the stage where I would cringe when I heard it. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't have a problem with the name or anything like that. And I, I never wanted to change it or anything like that. But I just never really associated with it. So this was a really good um, activity for me to do to become really um, familiar and and attached to my name and I probably should have done it you know a lot sooner than at 40 something years old but anyway <laughs> I've done it now and now I'm quite happy with my name and with people calling me by my name so <laughs> um, but uh, aside from that this is really a celebration of you so this art page is really going to be a celebration of you now for the one that I did in um, this art journal I basically um, I did this piece quite a few months before I actually uh, started this journal so it was basically just a pencil drawing of a wall with a vine on it and my name um, in the uh, depicted in the vine and initially it was just um, the grey and white um, just pencil and paper and nothing else and then um, when I decided to put it into this art journal I actually decided to colour the leaves a bit and then I added to the page so just some more vines I put my favourite quote and the quote that I um, kind of um, you know remember frequently and try to live my life by um, which is a quote that I don't even know where I came across it but um, it's a rainbow rail quote um, from a book of hers and it says she never looked nice she looked like art and art wasn't supposed to look nice it was supposed to make you feel something 
um, and that really resonates with me and and um, because it was sewing and making my own clothes and um, making clothes for other people is uh, one of my passions so I just love that quote so I wanted to include that on there and the other thing that I included is um, the actual meaning of my name so um, Karen um, in Danish I think means pure and it comes from the Greek Ikaterine which um, comes from the root Katharos so I wanted to have that on there uh, as well kind of so that there's a, a, a history to my name um, because there's no family connection to my name it was just a name that my mum picked out of thin air that she liked so I wanted some sort of um, background I suppose so that's why I put the meaning of it in there I think I'm speaking a bit too much about my name <laughs> But um, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. I really want you to focus on it. Just your name, nothing else, no connotations. So the thing with this um, creative act is it's a very, very selfish act. And, uh, not, and I mean that in a good way. I want it to be a very selfish act. I want you to be thinking purely about yourself and not yourself in relation to the other people in your life. So, so the... The pieces that we're creating here are very personal to you. Then they, um, I, you know, they can't have anything to do with your spouse or your children or your family. They, these are very, very individual and personal pieces to you, um, and that's what coming home to self is all about. It's coming home to your authentic self, the self that is you without the attachments. So, we, you know, not you as a spouse, not you as a parent. Um, not you as a friend, not you as a daughter or a son, you know, it's the authentic you, who you are originally from source. So, um, and I really feel this is really important. Um, yeah, so that's why I feel your name is a really good place to start. And so that's where we're going to start today. So. That is just the example of a completed page that I've done with my name. And now we will move on to um, a fresh one so you can see how I've done what I've done. I'll put that aside. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to talk about um, is your actual art journal. There's a number of ways you can do these art pieces if you don't have an art journal. Um, it's really not about going out and buying um, a whole lot of new stuff. You don't need to do that. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need to spend any money. So some ideas of what you can do for a journal is you can use an old book. An old hardcover book is good. You can use the pages in that for your art journal. And I will show you um, how to do that. Um, there's a, a soft cover book you can use as well. So you can pick books up from the op shop. You can get free ones from the op shop. Usually they'll have a bin outside of free ones. But you can go in and actually pick an, um, one that resonates with you and they're usually anywhere from 50 cents to two dollars. So that's a good a good thing to use as a journal and pretty cool I reckon and the other thing you could do is get a visual art diary this is just a really cheap one I think it was about three dollars um, so that's another thing that you can do these are good because with the spiral um, spine you can lay them completely flat uh, which makes them easier to work on so I did do just a couple of examples of name art um, in here just to give you some ideas. I want you also to remember that I am not uh, a drawer. I, I have no, <laughs> I really wasn't given any drawing talent. My daughter got all the drawing talent in the family um, and I, I haven't got any but um, I have other skills that I use. So, But I want you to see that it's not about um, how good you are at at drawing or painting or something like that. It, this is all about the art and creating uh, the piece of art. So um, that's why I thought it was good for me to do some things that are out of my comfort zone. <laughs> so you can see that it's not about being really good at something. And like I said, this isn't a tutorial. This is to give you ideas for creating your own piece of art. So 
this creative activity is I want you to take your first name and your full first name. So if um, your name is Rachel, um, but everyone calls you Rach, I want you to use Rachel. I want you to use your full first name that you were given when you were born. Um, so not a nickname or something like that. Um, I feel like that's really important because it, um, in the uh, part one video we, I talked about coming back to birth and um, you know uh, a blank slate you know the blank slate that you come into this world with so um, and then you are given your name so this is um, why I feel like it's quite important to use your full um, first name the name that you were given at birth so um, that's what we're doing and then basically it is creating a piece um, with that as your main focus your your name as your main focus so I've done some examples here um, for you now the tools and things you can use um, this one um, so my aesthetic normally is very much skulls, kind of Halloween-y, gothic-y, witchy, kind of, um, that's my, I just love that. So I did one that was a little bit um, really me, um, just for fun. Did that one just for fun in this art journal. Um, but, you know, it's as easy as using a pencil and a piece of paper. So if you have a pencil and an old book page, this is an old book page, um, then you're good to go. You don't need to go and buy lots of new stuff. And then just simply start by writing your name. Just write it really basic and then practice, you know, making it a bit more interesting and um, see what comes up. Decorate, start decorating the page around it and just see what comes up. You, I find that um, the hardest part is just starting. So with, with these, I just had to write my name and then let the pencil kind of take me where it wanted to go. Um, and you can, and that's, you know, just do doodle. Start with shapes, start with basic shapes that you know, circles and squares and triangles and flowers, hearts, diamonds, you know, just start with that and see where it takes you. The um, important part is the process and the thinking that you are doing while you are creating this piece of art celebrating your name so um, yeah pen and paper as simple as that um, this is another one I did and for this one I ripped up junk mail so literally brochures out of the letterbox um, advertising brochures ripped them up into small pieces and glued them onto a piece of brown paper um, uh, in the shape of the letters of my name and then just outlined them with a black marker pen and then did some little graffiti doodles around it so another um, example of something fun you can do I love gluing and pasting um, I just realized that today I was doing some more gluing and pasting and uh, it's just such a fun thing to do <laughs> it sounds really simple but I must have really loved kindy <laughs> So take yourself back to being a child and doing craft, you know, doing those craft activities when you were kids and it didn't matter what the end product looked like, you just loved doing the gluing and the, you know, pasting and painting and stuff. Take yourself back to that, that's what we want to get back to. We, it's all about the freedom to create anything. Um, it's not about, so much about the end product here. So that's another example. Um, Here's another one, which is kind of a bit of Zen Tangle. I really didn't like this one all that much. Um, but, you know, could be quite effective on a page. Um, I'll get back to that one. And then there's just another little um, Zen Tangle kind of one as well, with just different designs. Easy peasy. There's also 50 million different videos on YouTube and Pinterest about name art. So check them out if you're really, really stuck for ideas. But I strongly encourage you just to start just to write your name and then see where the decorating of it leads you. Okay. Um, this example here is actually the one I'm going to be using today in my new art journal that I'm going to be showing you. So for this, um, it was easy peasy. I just took a piece of plain copy paper. I inked the background 
um, of it and then I wrote very basic um, letters of my name and then I took scraps of fabric and ribbon and stitched the letters, stitched them in the letters, in the shape of the letters of my name. It was easy peasy to do. I'm sure you can figure it out. You don't, if you don't have a sewing machine, you don't have to stitch it. You could glue them, just glue them along in the shapes of um, shapes of the letters of your name. It looks really cool, and I love it so much. So I'm going to be using this today in my art journal. Um, if you do happen to want a tutorial on how to do that, just let me know in the comments, and I can create one of those for you. Okay. So, I am going to be using this big book for my Coming Home to South journal that I'm going to be doing. I went and picked this up for $2 from the op shop because, and I love it because I really wanted a landscape book. I really like landscape books to, um, for using those as art journals. Um, for some reason, I just, I, I like that orientation of paper better. Um, or it works better for me than portrait. Um, at least it does at the moment. That'll probably change again. Anyway, so I'm going to be doing a, more of an altered book. And um, I will show you quickly how to do that if you want to do that yourself. So basically get any hardcover book that is a size that you like. And then you want to make sure that it is a book that has sewn book pages not glued so if you open it up inside um, on the top if you look at it this way you should be able to see the signatures which are groups of pages that form the book and you should be able to find the middle of a signature if you open to the middle of the signature um, there will be thread the thread that holds the pages in the book. Those are the best types of books to use because the pages are less likely to fall out once you start altering it. And then um, all I do, or it's just a matter of going to the middle of each signature and I like to start off with pulling out half of the pages of the book um, for a number of reasons. The one is if you're doing an altered book, your pages and you're adding to it, then you're going to be adding to the thickness of the book. So you want to remove some pages to compensate for that. Um, and uh, the other reason is this book has like 174 pages. And I really don't want to decorate 174 pages for one book just now so um, I'm removing at least half of them and I might remove some more later depending on how the thickness goes um, and how bored I'm getting with it <laughs> before I want to move on to a new project so I've gone ahead and done that so you don't have to watch me so it's just a matter of going to the center of the signature and then getting the two pages together and gently pulling them and they will come out. So center of the signature, pull the pages and they will come out. So I've done that for this whole book and then um, you left your, uh, in this book there was eight pages per signature so um, each signature now has four pages in it just to give you an idea. Then what I did is um, I am going to be doing my name art on this page here and I like really nice thick pages to create my art on so I glued three pages together so one, two, three and I mod podged those pages and stuck them together so now I have a nice thick page for working on. Um, normally I would cover up um, the page that I'm working on with gesso and um, old book pages and stuff like that but I really really love this fly cover I really love this harlequin um, paper so I'm actually going to keep it for my art page that I'm doing with my name I am a really really messy crafter so <laughs> If this is it, doing this video is actually harder than I thought it would be. I love crafting and creating and I love sharing that with other people 
um, but I am a really messy crafter and it's really hard for me to be organized I've tried to grab everything that I think I will need and have it nearby and um, hopefully that's the case so oops, let me put that down and let's get started so what I want to do I think um, is I'm going to have my name on this part of the cover and then I'm also going to decorate this part. Um, the outside cover I will do later at another another time. And if you want to see what I do or you want me to video that, then just let me know. But I'll definitely end up showing you. So what I'm thinking is um, this page is to be all about me. So I'm, I'm going to be entirely selfish and I'm thinking of all the ways that um, all the colours and things like that that I would love to have in my house or um, even or my bedroom if it was um, you know if I could have anything I wanted what would I have in these places so that's kind of how I am going about creating this page it's completely selfish and I am going to use everything that brings me joy and makes me feel good and um, while I'm doing this I'm going to be thinking about you know um, how how much I like my name and what I want what feelings and things like that I want associated with my name so those are the um, and and those sorts of things are the energy that I'm going to be putting into this page if that makes sense so where do we start I'm actually going to do a few things that I've um, well basically every time I do art I'm doing stuff I've never done before because I I <laughs> I try I try out lots of new things to see if, if they work or if I like them so <coughs> I think I'm going to start with um, some music paper which I have here because I want texture on the page um, I love texture that's why um, so I mod podge this mod podge this and it's wrinkled a bit and um, that sort of thing doesn't worry me because I love being able to run my hands over a page and feeling feel bumps and you know stuff like that I just I love texture it's, uh, it makes it just so much more interesting for me so and then what I think I'm gonna do is I am going to put a bit of Mod Podge here just a little bit nothing major and then I'm going to sit that, that down I don't know if this is going to work so I might stop the video and have to redo it if it doesn't but we're going to try and then I'm going to do the same on this side this page and we'll see if this works okay we're gonna let that dry for a minute and I'll be back alrighty I'm back that mod podge, mod podge should have dried by now so we're gonna see if this works So when I craft I don't throw 
anything away <laughs> so all those little scraps will get used um, at another time whether in this project or a different one um, and the other thing when I craft is um, I'm really big on using what you have so I try and find stuff um, either second hand at the op shops or that I have lying around the house um, fortunately I've been collecting craft stuff for probably 30 years so I do have um, a collection of um, stuff already but um, you know whenever you start a new project there's always things that you want so that you don't have so I try and find those things um, either by thinking outside the square of what is what is a craft item or um, going to the op shop and seeing what I can find um, and similar with my when I sew now um, I prefer to reuse things then I won't say I prefer it but I really enjoy re, uh, repurposing things as much as I enjoy going and buying new fabric I mean there's nothing like going to the fabric shop and buying new fabric it's my favorite thing in the world to do but um, I am really conscious of how much stuff we already have in the world it, it, you know how much stuff I, I have just in this house and um, the majority of it just sits just sits around with no purpose so um, that's something that I've really become quite conscious of over the last couple of years and so I really like to reuse and repurpose um, where I can so a lot of my craft items and things that I use will be from a second hand shop or just stuff that I've had for years and years and years um, and that's what I mean when I say creating art doesn't have to be expensive. It can be, and um, it's really easy to get caught up in all the really cool gadgets and papers and inks and everything that are out there. I mean, it's so cool, and if you have the money to spend on it, then yeah. Um, you know, sure, do that if you want to, but um, if you are on a budget, and I am always on a budget, then, you know, you can still create really cool stuff um, with limited money so um, anyway let's keep going with this page I quite like that but I think I need a bit more Okay, let that dry again. That might be dry enough. It's so hot today that everything is drying really fast, which is helpful because one of the hardest things to deal with as a crafter is dry time, in my opinion, anyway. Okay, so I like that. So I like that this page has music on it of some sort because I love music. Music has been a part of my life, my whole life. My parents loved music. Um, they were DJs for a, a bit uh, in the 80s, um, you know, playing at parties and things like that. And they would put on discos for us in our garage, um, which was really cool. But um, so I like that music is going to be a part of this page that is all about me. And then what do I want to do? Oh, that's right. I found some serviettes that were left over from my 40th birthday party, I think. So I'm definitely a hoarder. That one has something, a bug on it. I 
something. So that won't matter. And I think I'm going to try putting them on the page. I want it to kind of look like the, the roses are cascading down the wall. We'll see. We'll see what happens. There's that texture I was talking about. <laughs> Holding my tissue now, but that's alright. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I can't pull my chair in because the cat has decided to lie underneath it. So, um, of course, cats take precedence. So it's, uh, creating is so meditative for me, it's when I really can just forget about everything else and, um, you know, concentrate only on what is going on the page. So I find it really, really meditative for me and it's got me through some really, you know, awful times in my life. But, um, I just love it so much and it always makes me feel better. I always feel way less stressed after I've done a bit of crafting. So uh, if you're new to crafting and you haven't done it before, it does become a bit of an addiction. But you've got to be able to let go of your mind. You've got to be able to stop thinking. Um, and if you are thinking while you're doing this piece especially, then um, it would be great if you could consciously choose to think about you know your name and the what what feelings and thoughts and emotions you want associated with it rather than what you're having for dinner or what the kids are doing or you know blah 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 so even if you can just sit down and, and give yourself 10 minutes um, at a time um, to work on your art then then do that um, in a quiet space where you're hopefully not going to get interrupted um, and just take some time out to spend some time with yourself and doing something that is just for you right I'm really not used to creating um, and being on camera at the same time so and this video is getting quite long now so I think I will stop there um, for now and I will do a little bit more and um, of this tissue stuff and then I will come back at a later date when I do the rest of the page.